podcast. Yum, 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 yum. Yum. I have no idea what happened in the wider world over the past two, three weeks, however long it's been since we recorded. Yeah, that's Why? Right. Uh, being kind of sick and stressing over how much work I wasn't getting done despite attempts. I'm caught up now, so I, I feel better. But yeah, it was touch and go for a while there. So I have no idea. Like, that I... Let's rip the band-aid off. There was apparently a Pokemon Direct or something. Oh uh, yeah, there was a Pokemon Direct. You know what? Uh, they showed a lot of nothing. That was my phone alarm. Sorry about that. Like I put in my notes in when I thought that uh, when I thought that I wasn't going to be able to be here for this podcast. I'd rather that I'd rather be disappointed now with them showing. Uh, not a lot that's really interesting than them showing a lot of really interesting things with a timetable that they can't keep up with so we don't get another Scarlet and Violet situation. If they need to take their sweet time to make things done correctly, then by all means, do so. Though it would be better if they would say as much. It's a weird thing that the community are basically begging them to take more time to develop and polish their games. Meanwhile, they're getting such sales numbers that the business side are never going to let them. It's really weird. <sighs> but yeah, what did they actually talk about? I don't I genuinely don't know. I didn't watch it. Um, well, uh, they talked about, um, and I didn't, I kind of got the highlights afterwards. I didn't watch it, but they talked, they, there's a, you know, they, they showed a brief trailer for the DLC for, um, Scarlet and Violet, okay. which was, um, just promotional art basically. Um, and that's coming out, uh, this, are both packs coming out this year? Patient, I can't remember. One is coming out in fall, and one is coming out in winter. The fall package is going to be taking you to a location where there's a traditional Japanese-style festival going on, and some interesting things going on there. And the other one is coming out with a... If I'm interpreting right, a you're going to be an exchange student with an academy in the middle of the ocean. Mm. Um, Traditional Japanese festival in a region that's supposed to be Spain rings a little odd, but okay. I mean, it's going to be a different uh, place somewhere outside of Paldea <laughs> if... Uh, Isle of Armor and uh, Crown Tundra are an indication. I'll show you the images um, that they shared, which feature the, uh, I guess, the legendary of each one. So that's the first pack. Mm. I have a bet that it's going to be somewhere in Sinnoh so they can do more crossover stuff with Arceus. Um, could be Sinnoh. Maybe I Jota. wouldn't be upset about that. I'd like it if they referenced Johto, but you know, I don't know. This was the other pack, which shows a, which um, I'm actually pretty interested in because it looks like it's much more battle focused. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Worth noting that there are um, DLC characters, the same two DLC characters present in both versions, a boy and a girl that are not your main character, which tells me that they're going to be our, our DLC companions, basically. Mm. DLC, um, which is kind of interesting because we had for um, Sword and Shield was different characters for each one, but this time we'll they seem to be second. like uh, going forward, keeping these two. And one obviously has uh, some red to her hair, the girl. The other has purple to his hair, so I'm guessing that they are the scarlet and violet ones, mm. respectively. Wait a second, does that guy with the white hair and the black and yellow cape uh, coach look familiar? G gives a bit of Guzma vibes. 
Yeah, and my thoughts precisely. Um, it looks like a huge Pokemon tournament thing is happening in the second one, and uh, I'm I'm kind of into it. It looks pretty cool. It's promotional art, so you know they make it look cool, but still, it looks pretty cool. So, um, to to get the brief description, uh, the first one is called the Teal Mask, where you take a le- trip to the land of Kitakami. There you meet po- uh, people in Pokemon while unraveling the mysteries behind the area's folk tales. Mm. And then the Indigo Disc, where you uh, become an exchange student and go to Blueberry Academy. And most of the school is located under the ocean. And it's focused primarily on Pokemon battling. Yeah, I'm kind of into this. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm into the Indigo Disc. It seems um, pretty good. And there were some... Uh, other Pokemon that they uh, have on their website. Um, one is called Okidogi. It's it's. Um, this is Okidogi. Um, and you can and, see the. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Monkey Dory and uh, Fazandipity. Uh... Fazandipity. Fezendivity. Do you think the Board Ape Yacht Club will sue for the second one? <laughs> um, they also mentioned that um, they're, they're adding in, they're expanding the Pokedex to bring in the, the classic Pokemon um, over 230 that they've said so far, um, <clears throat> which includes like. Um, Obviously, a lot of the uh, the Gen Four Pokemon that are missing, uh, you know, Nuzleaf, Nine Tails, all all the stuff that you'll need to have that compatibility with home, pretty much. I think there was data mined to have um, about eight hundred Pokemon total um, once these expansions drop. Hmm. Which you know, it's a Pokedex is over a thousand Pokemon, so it's not fully everybody but it's close i i think we've gotten to the point where you you can't expect that to be yeah. in a single game anymore you just can't. i agree with you i mean honestly if they're going to trim out any pokemon trim out the legendaries for goodness sake you don't need to keep making up excuses for all of these regional legend to inexplicably be available in all of these other regions, especially when you have other games where you can obtain them. Um, there is the transfer service, and the one thing people are going to want to transfer more than anything else is going to be the legendaries. Mm-hmm. Well, that and... Uh... There was another thing that they showed with a regards to Scarlet and Violet, which was, um, this is the the quick uh, screen for anybody who who saw it. You can look this up. Just look up the Scarlet Violet DLC legendaries, and uh, these were the two for the both expansion uh, past DLCs. Um, the second one is very curious because not only does it have the type of every Pokemon on its back. Um, it was actually referenced in the books within Scarlet and Violet, and yes. people have been theorizing that it was going to be the third legendary anyways, so... This is supposedly the source of Alterestalization, like Eternatus was the source of all Gigantamaxing, oh, or mm-hmm. Dynamaxing. That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and given that Terrestrialization is about you know, changing your type, and it has the symbol of every single Pokemon type on its back... Um, it probably it might have a really into everything. Yeah. yeah, it might have a really cool ability regarding you know a lot of uh, tight flexibility. Hmm. Of so. course, it is it is rather cute. Despite all of this, I'm I know some I know at least one person who is hoping that this is a situation like Hoopa, mm-hmm. where it will uh, get a transformation. Where it gets a form change where 
It's something more like, as you said in the past, a biblically accurate angel or else something out of Lovecraft yeah. mythos. Yeah, because that's what kind of looked like in the um, drawings. I imagine if this thing I mean, terrestrializes, it has a special terrestrialization form rather than just a silly sense. hat. It is a big crystal turtle. It is a crystal lizard from Dark Souls. That's that's a fucking turtle. It's it's underwater. I think that's, that's uh, the thing. Um, they also showed um, this currently. I don't know if it's still on. I didn't even partake in it. But there was new raids with two new Pokemon, which were the um, the uh, past version of Suicune and the future version of Rizion, uh, which are called Walking Wake and Iron Leaves, respectively. Mm. <clears throat> And then that's basically it for the Scarlet and Violet news. They, they they said, "Oh, by the way, Pokemon Home is coming," and I didn't give any more information. Fair enough. Other than that, it was a bunch of news on other Pokemon games, uh, Pokemon Unite, and Pokemon tournaments, and Pokemon Go. Well, Pokemon Which... Go is making. Can we go ahead? Which were Unite and Tournament? Unite was the mobile one, right? Yeah. Uh, no, that's Pokemon Go. No, no you know, Unite's the no mobile. mobile. Is it? Like League of Legends <laughs> and shit. Yeah, it's the MOBA. Okay. What was Tournament? Just the annual Pokemon tournament of... Uh, the games and the trading card game. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. They're holding it in Tokyo this year, I believe. And they also had the most hype announcement of all. It's finally coming. You've all been waiting for it. Pokemon Sleep. What? I know. The hype is... They, they mentioned it years ago. Pokemon Sleep. And we thought it was dead. Sleeping, if you will. But no. Pokemon Sleep is alive. And it's coming out. I don't know if he's joking about that. I don't know what this is. Or what, what he's talking about. And I don't it's know whether it's even a real thing. It's a real thing. It's a mobile game where... It's designed to help you... Uh, it's designed to reward you for getting a healthy sleep, which is good. It's just not the most hype thing we could ask for. <laughs> they they teased the thing that gets me is that they teased it years ago in like a Pokemon Direct, and then just never mentioned it ever again. And then all of a sudden, just come in out with this direct, being like, "And Pokemon sleep." Go to, and it's just like, really? Really? We're, we're, we're still going forward with that? It's valid. It might have the whole time. So, <laughs> how does it work? You place it next to your, you place it by your pillow when you go to bed and it records and measures your sleep. That sounds like a good way to, one, get everyone to cheese it incredibly easily, two, Give people really weird anxiety about their sleep. And then you get Pokemon when you wake up in the morning or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. People are going to cheese the shit out of that. If there's any kind of actual reward for it. <laughs> Too late. I just... I don't understand the point of it. I mean... Japan. That's... I, I guess you're you're doing your 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 work to try to promote a, people to have a healthy sleep schedule or get a healthy amount of sleep at least. Um, kudos. Yeah, all, all all the salary workers can put it next to their pillow that they keep under their desk while they continue to work because they're not allowed to sleep. Anyway, yeah. <clears throat> accurate. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, Pokemon did s 
some stuff. The DLC stuff is uh, sounds like the only thing that was really, really interesting. And that's, yeah. Just everything else is what it is. I was hoping for a date on Pokemon Home, and I didn't get that. They just said spring. I mean, it is spring, but okay. Yep, it's coming this spring. It's, hmm. Yeah, and it is spring. We're there. Uh, yeah. So that's cool, I guess. Pokemon. Really don't yeah. gotta catch them all anymore. That's no. That's not, that's In fact, they encourage you not to. Yeah, the, they're basically like, hey. The marketing in America works, but please stop. <laughs> oh, yeah. They also announced a new show on Netflix called Pokemon Concierge. Okay. That sounds interesting. <laughs> Just on the title. Yeah, apparently it's following the adventures of a concierge human who works at a resort for Pokemon. The promo art shows it's a blatantly stop motion uh, series, and it shows what we assume is the protagonist with a Psyduck beside them. Everything you just said made it more interesting. Hmm. Well, that's good. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. The only thing that is concerning is Netflix, but they've, you know. Hit or miss is, still means they hit sometimes. So, yeah. I mean, you'll get at least one season out of it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, Sisa, how you doing? You'd never go first. I realized that in the instant before I asked. Oh, that's weird. Oh. Uh, yeah, doing well. Um, I saw Mother's Basement's video on Eminence and Shadow, and I decided. I'm going to kick that up the list, and I've spent all morning watching the show. And man, it's good. What's that one? Uh, it's the one where there's uh, a guy who's obsessed with being a background character, but also the strongest background character. Uh, and he's just an absolute edgelord. And thinks that uh, he saves a woman and on the spot makes up that there's a big shadow organization controlling the world from the backgrounds called the Cult of Diablos. And it turns out he's right but he doesn't yes. know it. So he's just like, he's just, he's convinced that his, his organization that he accidentally made to fight this cult is just LARPing, essentially, and just playing along. And it's, it's an isekai, of course. Uh, and the main character is hit by a truck off screen in the first episode. It's, it's incredible. This is Emissary in the Shadows? Uh, Eminence in the Shadows. Eminence in the Shadows. All right. Um, I read the manga for this, um, and I can fully recommend it. It is um, just an edgelord um, isekai where the the main character is just kind of trying to be as edgy and as cool as he possibly thinks, and it comedically just works out. Um. It's the. It's just. It is really, really funny. Mm -hmm. It is. It's definitely fantastic. I like it a lot. I'm. I'd have to check, but I think I'm like eight episodes into it. I was shocked to discover it's really long, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I'm part of the way through episode nine, and there's twenty episodes. And uh, yeah, it's it's just good. I can't I can't really say anything more without spo spoiling any funny bits. So hmm. there you go. Um, it's my... weird how all of the isekai that are good seem to be subversions of isekai. This is a unique one that it's not subverting isekai because, like, it's not. It is sprinting towards uh, tropes and being like, I want you here now. Yeah. Yeah, but it feels like it's subverting the idea of, like, <laughs> hey, he, you go to a new world and you are super badass, but this guy just thinks he's lopping. Is 
the way it works. It, it's it's not a. It is more explicitly a power fantasy than the actual power fantasies because it's literally the character in a power fantasy. He doesn't think it's real, is what it sounds. That like. is, that's true. Uh, in fairness to the character, he does put in the work. Like he's training constantly, and not just like with magic. Like he's constantly working out. So he does put in that work, but uh, the world rewards him in ways that don't always make a lot of sense. He puts in an extreme amount of effort to set up cool entrances. God. Oh, man. Because he He... wants to be the cool and mysterious shadow. He spent Mm. his entire life savings on a bunch of things that looked fancy to put in a room to impress his own subordinates. (sighs) Oh, man. I think once. I think that room gets destroyed, like, the next day. <laughs> yes. He is a a loser who is dedicated to being seen as as cool as possible. I don't think it's even... Because he doesn't want to be seen as cool, though. No, he just wants to be cool. He wants to know that he's the coolest, but nobody yeah. else can know. Nobody else can truly know his secret identity. It's it's really good. Okay. Uh, also, I feel like at this point we could literally just have a truck driving down a highway. Nothing happens of interest. It's just a dude doing, you know, deliveries. He's just, you know, smiling. He's listening to the radio. And then smash cut to someone in the afterlife. And we don't we don't need the details in between. We know what happened. <laughs> there was yeah. a there was a manga I was reading that took the perspective and it was called Isekai Truck Driver. Mm. Of course it is. <clears throat> it was talking about a, a, a truck service that has a job of delivering heroes to other worlds so they have to go run over people uh, like people and meet quotas per day <laughs> yeah. does he like run through a building to get to someone eventually because they keep avoiding him <laughs> yeah yeah um, I, I remember seeing a fanfic of something similar I think it might have been like Black March but um like it was just um a truck tracking down a guy and just chasing him constantly and it's a months long cat and mouse chase between this dude and this truck to the point where eventually he is in like a fifth floor bathroom and a truck smashes through the wall stops seems to honk in despair that the chase has finally come to an end and (laughs) and then runs him over I'm sorry run that by me again (laughs) I feel like it would lose something in the second telling, so no. Uh, I've I've read manga where the premise of it is I don't want to get isekai'd, but everybody wants me to go to the other world to save it. I need to avoid that fate mm. as much as possible. It's it's become so prolific. Um it, it's hard to take it seriously anymore. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. It's very uh, very common. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Aside from that, uh, I watched um, Resident Alien on Peacock, uh, which was very good. Uh, it's about an alien that crash lands on Earth. Uh, he is there with the stra- express purpose of destroying humanity. With a device uh, that also crash lands, uh, and he crash lands in Colorado in the mountains. So his ship and the device get pretty much buried under snow. Uh, mm-hmm. He winds up finding someone on a lake, like a lake house cabin, uh, and kind of accidentally kills them and then assumes their form because he has those shape shifting abilities. And uh, turns out that person is the backup town doctor. Uh, and then the main doctor of the town nearby gets killed, and so he has to become the doctor. And he's just the weirdest motherfucker ever. I don't know who plays the the main character in that one. I'll look it up in a second. But man, he does a really great job playing so an te- alien. What you're telling me is Zoidberg. Yes. 
<laughs> Doctor, my pipe kind of hurts. The pipe through my stomach kind of hurts. That's normal. Leave it alone. It's fine. What that, was this called again? Uh, Resident Alien. <laughs> and and yes, you've basically described every doctor scene in the first half of the season. He does get better because he's like researching procedures as he's doing them. And it doesn't always go well. Oh, it's the hypochondriac again. <laughs> Sorry. He also, he also doesn't understand what pa doctor patient confidentiality is, so he'll just refer to people by their medical conditions. Like, oh, hey, one nut. Or... Uh. It's... If you have Peacock, because I think it's exclusive to that service, I fully recommend it. It's so good. There's a lot of moments where secondhand embarrassment gets a little bad, so maybe have your phone handy, just if you're susceptible to that like I am. Mm. Just yeah, well. focus on something else for a little bit. Hmm. What the hell is Peacock? Uh, it's, it's another streaming, streaming service. service. Yeah. For, yeah. for who? <laughs> like, so I don't that know. That I have to ask. So, is that like the, the Paramount one? <laughs> I think it's wholly original, but it's it's enough to get I think what Puss in Boots exclusively for the next like month or so. Oh. Uh, it's got a couple of things on it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Um, my Kill Team League Warhammer 40k Kill Team. Um, I've been playing that game a lot. I have a league that I. Uh, play. Uh, I have a different match against people every week. And I won my game last week for the first time. Uh, I've been on a bit of a losing streak, so it feels good to win. Uh, so I grabbed a pack of Space Marines, the Phobos Strike Team. Finally. Uh, I finally have actual Space Marines now. So that was fun. Um, I decided to paint them like uh, the remnants from uh, Fallout 3. The actual Brotherhood of Steel people. The red ones. Yes, the red and black ones. Yeah. With uh, very rusty, worn down looking gear. So it was uh, interesting trying to learn how to paint on rust, or at least the appearance of rust. Hmm. Uh, you pretty much dry brush faintly orange paint onto it, and it, it looks really nice, actually. Hmm. So I'm pretty happy with how those turned out. I'm learning more about painting, it's very nice. Hmm. Probably never be super good because I just don't have the temperament for caring enough. Mm. I don't have that kind of perfectionist streak. If it looks good to me, it's fine. Yeah. Mm. I, so, I yeah. know that feeling. Uh, Peacock is NBC Universal, by the way. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'll look up the actor for that one real quick. Uh, Alan Tudyk? Oh, Alan Tudyk? Tudyk. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he yeah, was, he... uh, on, he's been on, in a lot of things. He was in Dodgeball. He was the pirate. Um, he was the pilot in Firefly. And he's done a lot of voice acting, I believe. I wouldn't be surprised. Very yeah, much he in uh, character actor kind of mold. He plays the the main alien character and just nails it. So yeah, that's me. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal and all that stuff. Yeah, he's he's that mm. guy. He's, he's 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 a good actor, a fun actor is what I'll call him. Very. Yeah. <coughs> that's everything. Yep. Zero, how you doing? Good. Well, I, I've been sick for the past week, but yeah. Um, ten days ago, it's been a while since we recorded. Hmm. Uh, was my birthday. Yeah. Woo. Happy belated birthday. No, thank you. So I got um, no. I went out to eat with my family to like a Mongolian barbecue place, and it was really good. I had two bowls. Which Mongolian barbecue, for those of you who are not familiar, you uh, basically get a bowl, you set out, you grab a bunch of ingredients, you 
kind of mix some sauces together and then they cook it for you. Yeah. So you choose I'd... exactly what goes into your bowl. It's really fun. I used to go to a place like that all the time with my mother. It's closed down now, but I distinctly remember it being quite a spectacle to watch. Mm-hmm. It's fun to watch, and it also, uh, um, again, because you're picking everything that you want, uh, however it turns out, that's on you. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of fun with experimenting and uh, trying different things. And I usually have like tips posted on like, hey, if you're using a lot of meat, use some cooking oil, mm-hmm. you know, yep. stuff like that. Um, Is it uh, Who Hot or a different brand? Yeah, uh, it, it's it's just a local place. Ah, gotcha. So not like a part of a big chain or anything. This is good. Um, and then I went and I saw, uh, because my brother really wanted to see it, we went and we saw Creed 3. Okay. Which is a good. really weird movie. Because in Creed 3, Rocky doesn't seem to exist. They mention him once, but Sylvester Stallone is not in the movie. That's fine. And nobody talks about why. I mean, huh. it's not his movie. That's why. <laughs> I mean, no, but he was uh, he. Well, the the relationship between him and uh, you know Adonis Creed has been uh, kind of a, a big thing. He's been the, the mentor figure in that way, mm. <clears throat> and it just kind of feels like. Um, like they just killed him off screen and didn't show a grave, you know? That is weird it's, that he wasn't even like mentioned. There's not even a the, hand wavy the, explanation for why he's not there. Yeah, the only mention of why he's not there is, oh, not the only mention of him specifically is like somebody brings up, oh yeah, well you know, uh, you know. Creed took a took a fought Rocky even though he was a rookie, and that's it. That's the only time Rocky is ever name dropped. Oh, so proof that he exists, but he's not here, and they don't explain why. Yes. Um, I did a little bit of digging, and Sylvester Stallone uh, did not uh, chose to not be a part of that movie because he felt like it was going in a in a much more dark in a much darker direction that didn't really fit with, you know, the original Rocky roots. Uh, hey, Mr. Stallone, remember the film you had where you gave Uncle Paulie a robot? And you, and the, the reason Apollo Creed is dead is because he fought a Russian on so many steroids. <laughs> um, like... And then you gave a speech about how the Cold War needs to end. Like, it's a little rich, is what I'm saying, basically. Mm. <laughs> um, also, wasn't didn't you fight Hulk Hogan once or something? Yeah, in an exhibition match. So, you know, eat it, basically. <laughs> Fucking... Um, it is a... It is a very serious movie. There's there's not a lot of humor in it, and it is it is, you know, a, a darker tone because of it because there's like a lack of levity, I guess. Um, I I would say I enjoyed it. Um, I don't. Uh, the the core conflict is between. Um. Adonis Creed and and uh, a guy he knew when he was younger who you know wanted to be a boxer but uh, ended up going to jail um, because of some things that happened in the past and now that he's out like eighteen years later uh, he wants to get back into it and we kind of have skipped to the point where uh, you know Adonis Creed world champion steps down undefeated. That's like the start of the movie. So, beat the last guy, undefeated champion. Huh. And so he is trying to act as a bit of a mentor figure for his friend. And, you know, things happen that eventually lead to a fight between the two. 18 Which is years. very... Yeah? 
that 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 means he this this friend is very over the hill for a boxer. Okay. Yes, he's yeah. old. Yeah. Um, and they are constantly talking about like, oh, he's too old to fight, but you know, they're he... not wrong. <laughs> But he's uh, apparently very brutal and uh, tends to to break the rules or at least try to when he fights. So, yeah. The fuck did he do to get eighteen years? Um, ooh, hmm, I don't want to spoil it. That's probably a spoiler. But like, ooh. that's 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 a number you reserve for. It's bad, bad, bad stuff. Um. Usually, unless it was drugs, it was probably drugs. Yeah. But yeah, uh, my parents didn't like the movie because mm. they love Rocky, the yeah. original Rocky, and they did not like the new direction. Um, I think it was a told a solid narrative, but I, I do think that the lack of levity uh, harmed it more than it uh, helped it. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, the Rocky movie's always been kind of campy, so like taking that away feels kind of like robbing a bit of an identity from it. Mm hmm. And I, I suppose it would be one thing if, like, uh, they had made this tone shift, like, I guess more evident during the the first Creed movie, mm. but. This is the third one, and they did a, a, a very, you know, they, they did a harsher tone shift. So not everybody, if people who like the original Rockies and wanted more of that, you're not going to get it. Hmm. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. Uh, I got, my, my brother got me a, a Metroid Prime, the remake of it. I have not played that yet, but uh, I did get some birthday money, which I used to buy Octopath Traveler 2, because I've heard some very good things about it. Hmm. One of the best things it has is the ability to double um, the speed of your turn-based battles. Yeah, Going at two times speed. Everything is nice. that. We, we don't need 20-second cutscenes for a move anymore avoid that that'd be cool i do had... appreciate the disguise approach of just straight up having a toggle for uh, combat animations you can just turn off mm. Mm. it also i think there also does something there's also something in there that um messes with the encounter rate or lowers it or what have you which is nice because uh i've already noticed the encounter rate is is lower than it was because my problem with the first Octopath was um, fights were long and very often. I, it felt like I couldn't get anywhere without doing like six fights first. So happy to report that they've they've definitely improved in that regard for me. Hmm. That's good. Um, the other thing that I had issue with was characters just not talking to each other because they all have different stories. And yeah, no, uh, I've heard that's been mostly fixed. Actually having your party members interact with each other. Cool. I have not met any of the other party members because I'm not that far in yet. Um, I'm playing uh, Temenos, who is an inquisitor. Um, who's step kind of the pillows? He he works for the church, and during the day he has, um, his his daytime ability, which is to get, uh, villagers to you know follow him or join his party temporarily, and then at night he gets a different ability, which is the ability to interrogate people. <laughs> Because he's the Inquisitor. Yeah. And that's done through, like, you, you choose to interrogate somebody, and then you go into a special, like, mindscape where you then battle them in a turn-based battle to get your information. 
Okay. And all the characters have like day and night abilities. Hmm. You know, one character has an ability where he can challenge people to fights and then steal their moves if he wins. Hmm. So kind of a blue magey type thing. Yeah. <clears throat> So, you know, aside from that and just being sick, um, hang out with friends, uh, you know, day after my birthday, uh, played. I, I haven't been able to really uh, play it, but I got a chance to finally play with, you know, some IRL friends. Uh, the Scott Pilgrim game on the Switch, the, the beat em up. Huh, okay. Is it the Live Arcade one from back in the day? Yeah, yeah, because I had the Xbox Live Arcade one back in the day, and um, so I picked up the Switch one a while ago, and it's still fun. The animations are still great. Yeah, I, I remember uh, when that first came out, it was like, hey, this game is great, no one fucking bought it. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, it's it's a really good beat-em-up, too. Hmm. But, you know, beat 'em ups aren't very popular. Um, and, and I think part of that is due to marketing. Just. When people think of beat 'em ups, they think of like arcade beat 'em ups, where it was designed mm -hmm. to milk quarters. And that's. That's not a model people want nowadays. <laughs> like, if they ever did. Um, so, yeah, the ones that don't actually do that as much, the one like. The Castle Crashes mode, where, mold rather, where it's a game that you're meant to play uh, and be mm -hmm. able to progress through. Uh, that's well. A River concept. City Girls did well. Yeah, like that came out much later though. Mm -hmm. When it was, I feel like that one was expressly marketed as, "Hey, it, it, this isn't a fucking arcade game, so don't worry about it." It's also. Um having online capability is like the make or break for it. Mm. And the Scott Pilgrim game does not have, to my knowledge, uh, online capability. So. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah. I remember having fun with you guys playing cash, 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 cash. Castle cash, Crashers. Cash money. Yes. I remember that too. Yeah, that was fun. When we weren't having network issues for whatever reason, I don't think we ever figured that out. Well, we can always try again. Hmm. Um, but yeah, aside from all of that, um, nothing much. Just watching the new season of Survivor that started with my family, because that's one of our shows we watch. Uh, time to see if the, 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 th the thing they have this time as a as a very interesting thing um one one of the things that they have um aside from the fact that multiple people are getting injured in the first episode from doing stupid things or just being in a rush and unfortunately hitting their head on a wooden plank really hard hmm. um is it oh hey you know the they, there's these bird cages in the middle of your camp, or not in the middle, but off to the side of your camp. And in that bird cage is a bag, and there's a lock on that cage. You need to find the key. But if you get the key, then you have to open it and take what's inside, without anybody else seeing. Otherwise, they're gonna want to, you know, vote you out. I like the mind game social stuff. Yeah, didn't someone get like a concussion? Yeah. Another guy uh, was uh, climbing on rocks, like dangerous rocks, and slipped and fell. So, yeah. Not survivors then. That That wasn't very survivor of them. I guess. Mm. You gotta, I, I you gotta don't know how care. to talk about these shows. I'm sorry. 
if you injure yourself and you have to get taken to a hospital, you're off the show. So um, don't injure yourself. Because uh, the reason why the guy got the concussion was he was rushing and he dove to get underneath this um, wooden thing so he could crawl underneath as part of the, uh, the f first challenge. And he dove so fast, he didn't accurately judge the distance, and his head hit the plank. Hmm. Yeah, don't rush, but encourage everyone else to. If you're the last one uninjured, you win. <laughs> That's that's a plan. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a strategy. The game's been on for like 30 years or something. It's been on for a long time. Hmm. And at this point, people are like, oh yeah, I know. I've actually been making these challenges at home with my 3D printer and solving puzzles in, in preparation. <laughs> So I mean, that's pretty yeah. great practice. Like technology makes that possible, I guess. It's like, wow, you did that challenge really fast. Oh, I built it at home with uh, planks of, with just you know plywood. It's like we've gotten to that stage. Mm. But yeah, uh, that's it for me. I'm gonna go blow my nose because I am uh, still sick. Mm. Uh, I forgot something, uh, so mm. I can. Cut in real quick, if possible. All right. uh, I did actually uh, grab Hogwarts Legacy. I went to the store, was looking for a used copy, and the clerk is like, hey, we don't have any uh, new or used. But he turned around and whiffed out a copy, and he's like, hey, inventory difference. Uh, you just have this for free. So I just got a free copy of the game, so that was nice. All right. Yeah. Uh, and, man, <laughs> as I put more and more hours into the game, I realized that, like, it sucks that this game is getting painted by the JK Rowling brush because, man, it's really LGBTQ friendly. Yeah. Like, you meet several gay characters. There's a trans character, none of which are insulted or even, like, called out for being anything but straight, cis, whatever. And, and I don't know. Everything about the game is, has so much heart to it. Like, it's really well made. Yeah. Man, it's a fun game, but fuck. Reality sucks. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that was it. Just that. They're apparently going to make a sequel to the surprise of no one. I have no idea what it could be. Yeah, fair. Because, you know, we have explored the school now, and that was the main draw. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious what they're going to do with it. I haven't... Uh, I've done a lot of the side stuff, as I do with anything open world related, so... Hmm. I haven't gotten very far in the story. Uh, so I don't, act, I don't actually know how it ends. Uh, recommendation is get to the point where you get the unlocking spell before you start doing exp exploration. Yeah. Yep. I discovered that real quick. Hmm. That that game is really locked off if you don't have that spell. It sucks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe they'll do stuff in other parts like people have been saying hey how about doing one on the american school which i i've heard was uh an all girls school but i'm not entirely sure on that i feel like that would be a I, bit odd for them to have I, only one school and it's only for girls but yeah that might have been an au thing of someone being weird and a fanfic yeah, it might have been. I it's hard to tell what's canon and what's not these days, so mm. who knows. And then the Japanese school where their uniforms change depending on their proficiency with different types of magic instead of having like a house system. But their uniforms also turn pure white if they ever do dark magic. <laughs> so I feel oh. like that might be a bit of a Hmm. Might get in the way of people firing off torture curses at each other constantly, like they do in this game. Yeah. Yeah, when I unlocked talents, I looked immediately went to the dark magic skill tree, and there's so many skills that are like, oh, everyone dies if you hit them with this certain amount of spells. Yeah. You just wipe out a room of people. Yeah, just like all of the spells you cast now 
apply curse, and then if you hit them with a killing curse, they instantly die. Everyone hit with it. It's like, yeah. And that, I don't think that wears off. The curse mm-hmm. doesn't. No. I mean, it's, it's dark magic. It better be strong. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fair. It's the entire point, is there's a temptation to use it because it's so good. Uh, uh, practically speaking, not morally, obviously. Well, yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, fun game. I look forward to where they go with it. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So, um, patient, how you doing? I'll go last. Okay. Mm, you sure? I can wait patiently for you to go first if you want. Now you're definitely going next. Like, just go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, not much is going on this week or the week before. Uh, getting stronger at church, getting helping to heal better from traumas I'm starting to recognize. It's slow going, but it's it's better. That's good. Yeah. And uh, Hornet's birthday was uh, a few days ago. And so Zom and I went out and uh, treated him to a local sushi place. Where at his insistence, I tried sushi for the first time in my life. Mm. Was it good? I loved it. I was not mm. expecting that. Sushi's great. Yeah, apparently. There's a reason why it's so expensive. <laughs> Just mm. you talk about raw fish and rice, it doesn't really seem like something that should that should taste so good but the texture and the taste and it all comes together with the soy sauce and the pickled ginger and it's just very delicious in the end i only tried one kind of fish but eh, i'll just have to broaden my horizons in the future um there's cooked rolls there's you know shrimp rolls there's crab rolls um, there's a lot of good stuff if you don't like just the raw, you know, fish. If it makes you squeamish, yeah. It's, it, it didn't make me squeamish. It was just, it seemed strange to me that it was a thing in the first place. It What I tried was raw fish, and it was delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh... I would recommend trying some cooked rolls as well. There's there's some there's a really good type like uh, I think it's like either crab or shrimp or something, but it's it's cooked and it's just I absolutely love it every single time. I'll bear that in mind. I mean, most of the rolls I was looking at had avocado in them. I'm not fond of avocado. Hmm. Yeah. Did that uh, did that come through? Yeah. Uh that's fair. In in my experience, uh I, I usually can't even taste the avocado because you know it just kind of blends in with everything. Yeah, fair enough. I'll keep that in mind going forward. Uh also, um don't they probably explain this to you, but that green stuff on the side, that's that's wasabi. They did not explain that. But I knew I know what wasabi looks like. Yes, really spicy. My I'm friend, aware. Yes, when, I, when we took him to sushi uh, back when he was alive, um, I thought it was guacamole. Oh, oh no! Mm. Oh, you dipped that hard. <laughs> That's bad. So he got a huge glop of it, mm. being you know Mexican American. Yeah, and. Uh, well, he never wanted to go to sushi. Go get sushi ever again. <laughs> I mean, understandable, even if it is fully his fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. 
<sighs> so yeah, uh, not much else going on besides that. Just, just more work stuff. Although I did hear earlier today from someone at church that uh, something that's making me nervous about going to work tomorrow, something about uh, rumors of a, a run on the bank or something. Huh. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Th there was effectively a run on banks in the cryptosphere that I've heard about. Uh, which is basically um, one of the cryptocurrencies that is supposedly uh, tied to the dollar in some way that I don't especially understand. Like, it was supposed to be one of the secure ones that isn't as volatile, and yet it completely fucking bottomed out, so there was a run on that currency. Well, currency, air quotes. Um, but that's all I've heard of. So, might if anything, it's a very, very local thing, I guess. I don't know. Probably. Mm. Yeah. He did ask if the bank I worked at was a regional one. So. Mm. So, yeah, that's, that's it for me. Mm. Uh, well... I I don't know why I'm doing this role playing thing. It's weird. Um, it was my birthday last month. I forgot to mention it last time we were on. <laughs> Birthdays all around. Happy belated mm -hmm. birthday, Casey. Yeah, I am. Oh yeah. Currently, the internet's most popular rule at the moment. Yay. Ah, of course. Yeah. Uh. Other thing I didn't talk about last time, I uh, they apparently ported Tetris Effect to the PC, and I bought and played that, and that's neat. It's, it's Tetris with cool effects and music, and that's pretty much what it is. It's pretty neat. Um, I installed No Man's Sky again for like the sixth time. It plays better than it did in 2018 or 19, the last time I played it. Um, it remains a game that seems to have basically no story but the one that you make it, and apparently that is a deal breaker for me, because, um, like, when it came out, I had all of these problems with it because it's just, it was just a slog to play back then. Mm. Now it's not. It's actually... You know, the gameplay loop is pretty neat, and it has a very nice tutorial to guide you through all the new systems. Like, you can uh, build a base that is instantly, uh, you know, resistant to the elements, despite being made of wood. Um, the moment you finish building it, and it has four walls and a roof, which is nice when you're playing on survival, and you get about 60 seconds outside of your ship before you're... Um, uh, environment protections run out um, <laughs> so uh, it, it plays pretty nice um, I am still in the resource struggle point of the game I would like to be out of the resource struggle part of the game because it is really inconvenient but you know that's, that's how the gameplay progresses um, I'll probably stick with it for a while and see whether it, I actually start enjoying it at any point but, you know, it's fine. It's probably much more enjoyable if you are more tolerant of uh, the games where you make your own story, air quotes. Um, yeah. I, I, I like a bit more narrative structure myself, I guess. <laughs> you know, big surprise. Um, yeah. So, that that is a thing I have been playing off and on when I have not been... You know, tearing my fucking hair out trying to get stuff written. But, um... Aside from that, I pre-ordered the third and final Atelier Riser game. So that's going to be fun when I get around to that. 
Uh, and have you played the other two? I have played part of the first one and enjoy it well enough. Apparently, the second one fixes all of the problems I have with the first one. So you know. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty neat. I like the character designs for reasons. Um, mm. <laughs> anyway, um, as part of that writing thing that I was talking about, um, it became relevant that I should probably watch the saga of Tanya the Evil. So I have watched that. Okay, so this is Casey in post. Uh, after doing the recording, Casey realized, hey, he should probably look into some of the things he's saying about this show to check whether they are actually correct. They were not. Um, it was uh, not about the actual content of the show. It was about some of the localization stuff, and he was entirely wrong about all of it. So that section's got cut. Uh, and instead, we're going to go with Casey's opinion on the show just in post so that I can actually talk about it and it doesn't go from Casey bringing up the show and then Zero immediately interrupting to talk about something else. So, uh, it's a good show. It's a really good show. Um, very interesting approach to uh, the subject of warfare. I guess we can call it that. I mean, it's it's probably fairly standard as far as most war stories go that aren't trying to lionize any particular side like you will get your american war stories that are like america is the greatest military and we do all the cool things and then the enemy is going to be the most evil vicious bastards in the world and they're horrible killers even though the americans are also killing people and vice versa like just like i am sure there are plenty of uh films from other countries that do very similar things lionizing their own militaries and decrying any other and saying they are the enemy and need to be destroyed yada 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 so that films that don't try to do that and shows that don't try to do that and actually try to tell what war is uh, probably do a lot of similar things to this, which is fair enough. That's just what the subject matter is. Um, in that it is, effectively, there are no good guys in the show. Everyone is killing everyone. The goal is to kill thousands of the enemy uh, so that your side wins and gets territory or favorable economic trading terms and yada yada things that happen at the end of a war and yeah it it plays that entirely straight it seems like uh just there are no clean hands even the title character of tanya the evil uh which is not actually the title character in the original title but you know whatever you know the point um she does horrible things, but her entire character is based around if I follow the rules, then I will succeed and be able to do whatever I want. And she does follow the rules and gets mad when other people don't. Like, she will adhere to treaties and such things, but she will do it in such ways that are just barely within the, the terms of those treaties. Like you have to announce to a civilian structure that has military purposes that you're going to bomb the shit out of it. So she does in this nice and high-pitched cutesy voice that makes it sound like it's not really an actual attack and still just bombs the shit out of it with all the people inside. Technically, she followed the terms of the treaty and so it is valid. Which is awful, but that's kind of the point. That's what war is you can set as many rules as you want it will still be a race to the bottom in terms of morality and whether you care about those treaties is a subject of debate a lot of the time um so you know it plays to what war actually is aside from the magic and bullshit like the magic literally just fucking stands in for fighter jets well not jets 
fighter planes and bombers and, you know, your large-scale artillery and such things like that. It's literally the same thing. So, yeah, I like that it's playing that fairly straight. The... The religious parts are odd, but odd in an interesting way. Like, I appreciate how it's approaching the terms of owing worship to a god so that you get things out of it. Like, the way the title character approaches it is, I don't want to need to worship god. I want to be able to do things on my own and succeed on my own. And only ends up worshipping the god-type figure that may or may not actually be a god out of obligation for her own survival because that god figure is explicitly trying to kill her to force her into worship. So the question becomes if worship is only given for the sake of getting something out of it, is it truly genuine worship or is it just obligation for the sake of a higher power that is only doing it for their own vanity this probably doesn't play into actual religion uh one would hope but uh that is a sticky subject that i probably don't really want to get into at this point i have thoughts um but this isn't really the venue for them. Um, so I'm just going to really keep my mouth shut on that subject. But I like the approach to it and the... The differences in viewpoint of how everyone seems to approach this specific subject. Like, there are people that are very willing to worship and will do it for the sake of getting something out of it. There are people that only do it out of obligation so they don't get killed in spite. There are people that do it just because that's what they do. And that's, you know, just a thing they do. They don't really have any ulterior motive in doing so. So it's approaching the subject of worship from a lot of angles. And what you take from it you might take something entirely different from it than I did. But I won't tell you what I took from it because that's, you know, like I say, heavy subject and not something I'm going to discuss entirely on my own without, like, uh, other viewpoints willing to tell me to shut the fuck up because I'm wrong. Like, that's... <laughs> I probably am. But, you know, this is not my soapbox, is what I'm saying. So... I enjoyed it a lot. I think it's definitely a worthwhile show to watch. Uh, I'm I'm glad I watched it, despite the mercenary reason for watching it. Um, and I look forward to a season two whenever that comes out. That's going to be cool. I hope. You know, I pray you could say. You know, no, that's. Not... <laughs> Let's pretend I didn't say that. Pretend I didn't leave this in after doing the editing to put this part into the fucking show. And then let's just fucking move on to whatever Zero's talking about. I hear it's funny. You know, having been there about 30 minutes ago, I, I, I hear it was funny. You know. You know. Okay, that's it. Oh, um, I actually did remember something. Sweet. I have been watching um, clips of Nero Sama, the AI VTuber. Oh, yeah. Oh. <sighs> And she is hilarious. Oh no. <laughs> uh, for reference, this is a, a actual like AI developed VTuber. So um has a, a like a text to speech that sounds you know, obviously still robot, but relatively normal. Like it's a unique voice. Mm. Um and they did that I've, AI I've, thing of like take a minute of someone talking and then just let it go kind of thing. Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm not sure, but um, 
it is the the AI is unhinged and yeah. extremely sassy. So I've seen a lot of um, uh, collabs. I've seen a couple of collabs rather uh, of people uh, having that VTuber on their stream as a backup, and it gets interesting because the VTuber Nirosama has a uh, filter, kind of. So if she says something too far, she'll just say filter. Uh, and then she'll turn around and say something like, please step on me, or I like your ass, or something like that. <laughs> so I don't know what the filter um, is. The filter's constantly being improved, but you'll be like, um, you'll ask a question, and then you'll just get filtered back. And you're like, what did she say? What did she say? What was too bad? I mean, that's that's essentially my experience with character AI, which is a uh, chatbot AI. So, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. What were you going to say, patient? No, I was... I I was just speechless, really. Okay. Just... Cool. It... it <laughs> uh, that is a fair reaction. I, I was watching... The, they did a collab where... Uh, not necessarily a collab, but the... the um, her creator was... Um, doing a stream where he was, you know, fixing her code and modding Among Us so that she could play Among Us. And uh, had her on during the time, so she was constantly trying to get his attention and responding to the things he was just muttering. And you just you just see a father and a daughter of <laughs> oh, just trying to get his attention to be like, okay, yeah, that's fine. The world like, do, is do, you think weird. do you think I'm cute? Oh, yeah, sure. Pause. Do you think I'm too annoying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know where we are anymore. The worst timeline, but take your enjoyment where you can. Oh, uh, I, I am, I'm enjoying it. It's, it's hilarious, and it's also surprisingly wholesome at times. Yeah, it's true. Cool. Especially seeing the collabs where people are reacting to this unhinged AI that has entered into their into their stream. Yay. So. I want to be out of a I, rec I recommend. <laughs> oh no, never. No. No way. No. <laughs> you have to understand that half of what she says is nonsense. Yeah. It, but but you get understand nuggets. context. You get those nuggets of just genuinely hilarious interactions. She also that... does the the thing I've noticed with chatbots that do a lot, where she will mix up who is who in the mm -hmm. conversation you're having. So she'll suddenly, for she'll suddenly talk like she is the actual VTuber that is um, uh, that is having a collab with her. Yeah, or she'll mix up like you know. <laughs> the context of who was saying who uh, what what things and <clears throat> genders too genders is yeah. messed up a lot not not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but um hilarious hmm. okay nobody's going to be out of a job soon not soon well i mean hmm. So, uh, uh, so Patreon, I believe. Uh, oh yeah, we do need to do Patreon. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let me load it up. All right. It's always no, logs me in. It's a different thing. All right. So, um, oh my gosh. Yeah, no, they changed the thing. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Gig, uh, give me a second. This is, I hate that they changed this. Every time I have to struggle to 
find something. Um, because it's it's now it's like it it used to show just a, a nice thing that showed the patrons and the amount, and now it doesn't. Yeah, I assume it just gives you a list of people who have, and then you have to manually click each one to see how much they gave. Mm. Alright. I think I found it. Okay. Thing. It's not showing the amount still, but it is showing the... Oh, that's weird. Okay. Thank you to... I'm sorry. It's, it's messed up. It's all messed up. It's all wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sure that uh, is is very appreciative that we gave him a shout out. <laughs> all right, hold on. Okay. Thank you to our patron. I can't see the amount because um, this freaking thing is stupid. Um, but you're probably it's your usual amounts. Uh, <laughs> thank you to uh, Ryu Hitsia for your donation on uh, Patreon. Thank you for being a patron. Uh, thank you to Sailor of House Thunderbird for being a, pa a patron. Thank you to Vale for being a patron. Uh, thank you to Greek Guy for being a patron. Uh, thank you to Ethan F for being a patron. <laughs> um, thank you to the Crossbrain, as always. And of course. thank you. And thank you to. Uh, Tempest Troper as well. You guys are awesome. Thanks, guys. I'm, I'm going to have to figure that out between recordings of how we're supposed to find that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's somewhere. Mm. It'd be weird if it wasn't. But it, yeah. it there used to be a very easy way to just, you know, tell. Hmm. Yeah, but that was convenient. So, of course, it had to be changed to be the biggest pain in the ass possible. It was probably or... changed to be more convenient for big Patreons that have a lot of people. Because what it does now is it shows the it shows immediately all of the uh, patrons on one page that have ever been a patron of the channel, oh. instead of just the active ones. That does sound completely useless. Yes, actually. And then I have to add in a filter to find the active ones, and then. Um, the display is, is too big so there's a scroll uh, bar at the bottom to show me. It doesn't show me the amount anymore. It just shows like lifetime and current tier. Mm. Mm. So this is some inside baseball but you know, we're at the end of the episode. Yeah. Uh... Mm. Discord link in the description. Patreon link in the description if you feel like it even though you won't get shouted out for the actual amount you donate because weirdness. But you know, we'll story, find it. I mean, yeah. uh, blame Patreon. I could shout out tears, <clears throat> but some people are untiered and just wanted to donate. So I. <clears throat> and you know, got shouted out for the first time. So you know, that's <laughs> nice for them. Really neglected over the. <laughs> I'm gonna strangle you. I'd love to see that. Then you'll shout out um, that guy again. They'll never find your body. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Nice. See you guys. Bye.